here. I have a new lesson for you this week, and I think it's a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy it too. So what you're gonna do is you're going to find a picture of an animal. It can be a real photo, it can be from a magazine, or you can print it from the computer. Okay, so I didn't have any magazines and I didn't have any pictures I was willing to cut up. So I went online and I printed some pictures. So um, I want you to find a picture of an animal and you can do as many of these as you want to. I thought it was a lot of fun, so I'm gonna do some more. Uh, and here is my first example. I printed off a funny little squirrel here and then I drew its environment. So you can turn it into a picture, a story in your picture where your picture tells a story. You can just draw, you can uh, print half of an animal and then draw the rest and finish the animal in your drawing. So you're gonna draw the animal's environment. It can be a serious picture, it can be a funny picture. So I had fun with mine. Can you guess what's going on here? How is he feeling? He is like, this is the best biggest acorn I've ever seen in my life. So I thought that was cute. I was like, I have to use this little guy. So it reminds me of the, that my mom has some funny squirrels at her house that my me and my kid like to watch. So I thought that he would be cute to use. So I'm gonna show you some more ideas and I can't wait to see what ideas you come up with. So here I printed out a just a giraffe's head and a neck and I'm gonna finish drawing my giraffe. So I'm going to actually cut him out very carefully, glue him down, and then I'm gonna draw the rest on my, my picture. And I'm just working right out of my sketchbook today. The same place I put this cute little guy. All right, let's get started. When you're cutting out your picture, you wanna make sure you get as close to the edge of your animal as possible without cutting off any of your animal. You don't wanna see any other part of the picture or white paper and then you glue down your picture to your white paper. I use the paper towel under mine because I wanna make sure I get all the edges really good and I don't get my table all messy. When you press it down, when, when you put it down, you need to press it down really well also. And now I am ready to complete my picture. So I'm going to sketch with a pencil because if I mess up, I can erase it. So tr start off with the pencil, especially if it's something you're not used to drawing on a regular basis. So I'm gonna finish my uh, giraffe, adding the legs and the tail. And look, I even messed up a little bit. I had to erase some lines. So even Miss Fortenberry draws lines that I don't wanna be there sometimes. When you know you've got it right, then you can outline with Sharpie. So I'm just making sure I'm outlining everything really nice and neatly, adding the spots to my giraffe, all those special details that make a giraffe a giraffe. Now that my giraffe is complete, I am going to draw its atmosphere. So he is in Africa out in the wild safari. So I'm gonna draw some trees and some grass. And I wanna layer my trees. So I wanna add as much texture and detail and depth to my picture as possible. So I'm thinking about if he was really out there in that hot, hot land, where would everything be placed? What kind of trees would be there? So I'm gonna draw some bigger, I drew bigger trees because those would be closer and the smaller ones would be farther away, right? I'm adding some grass. I'm not coloring in my picture with my Sharpie. I'm just drawing the lines with it. I'm gonna draw some sun, a sunrise and you can leave it black and white like this. I think that looks pretty neat just as it is. Or if you want to go that extra step, oh, make sure that you erase those pencil lines too. If you want to go the, those that extra step to really make your picture look awesome, then if you would like to, you can choose to color it. 
So not every sky is always blue, right? So I add a little pink and I'm gonna work little by little with my sunrise. I'm coloring my sun really, really nice and dark and bright. And I am taking the crayon and I'm layering the colors in my sky. So if you color softly, you can keep adding colors and layering to blend them together just as if you were using a color pencil. Uh, if you wanna use markers on this, you can. If you wanna use color pencils, you can. I'm just using regular Crayola crayons. Uh, and then I'm going to color everything in my picture because I started it. So I did do that squirrel picture and I didn't color it in. I thought it looked really neat as a black and white illustration. So this is your choice if you want to color. Um, in this picture, I thought about things like, I have a lot of grass and a lot of green trees. It would look mighty boring if I colored everything just one solid green color. So I found some different shades of greens and I colored my, my grass and I colored the trees, different shades of green. I layered some brown because the grass out there would be a little brown, so I layered some brown real softly and then I went back on top of that and I added the green to it and my finishing touches I'm coloring in my giraffe for my completed look and I love how this turned out this was a lot of fun to do okay so go ahead and get started on yours don't forget you have to share your artwork with me through the Google form. So at the end of the slideshow, there is a button. Click on that button, fill out your first and last name. It's important that I have both first and last name. Select your teacher in your grade level, upload a picture of your finished artwork. If you want to share your artwork on the Student Art Gallery, you can, there's a link for that also but it is mandatory that you do the Google form and upload your picture there so that I can give you a grade, okay? I can't wait to see your art. Bye guys. Bye.